Welcome to the Mariah Report. I'm Dan Enriquez. I'm Martin Burgess. Here we are. <laughs> Somehow there's a coronavirus global pandemic and there's still Mariah stuff to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> No matter what goes on in the world, there will always be something Mariah related. We can't get away from it. It's it's almost like too much yet not enough yet like, OK, uh, you know, it's just so much. So we do have a lot to talk about today. We're we're going to talk about hashtag MC30 like we always do. Well, it's rolling and it's good. It, exactly. Mm-hmm. We got a lot coming. It's building up, I feel. Yeah. We're also going to talk. Uh, Mariah's co-author spoke uh in an in interview so we'll we'll tidbit that she did and she gave some key words that get people excited oh girl wait i we'll know just wait I know. and then speaking of excited we're also going to talk about uh one of mariah's <laughs> former friends who got a little excited yes um allegedly according to another one of mariah's friends debrat so we'll yeah. talk about that. But uh, <laughs> what's new with you this week, Martin? What's going on? What's happening? Uh, the usual, staying hot. inside as much as possible. It's been hot as hell. So I've been staying in. I know. And there's is there there's no beach moments because like things are getting worse now. I know. I feel like it's going to come back soon. Well, when is like the normal flu season? I'm thinking, isn't that like winter? Fall? Yeah. Winterish. Coming soon. So I'm sure people are going to be on high alert. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Well, now I'm paranoid because on the What Man Is Most podcast, the other one I was working on, we were just wrapped up season one. We had... Uh, Congrats on that. Thank you. Thank you. We had a professor on who specializes in pandemics and he like his specialty was the bubonic plague Ooh. and he had just released a book last year. Oh, his, his, This thing that stuck out to me was that he said... By the time a virus is detected in society, it's already been it's all, it's, swelling. It's exactly, exactly. And that's what I thought about COVID-19 because I was like, girl, this didn't just happen. This stuff has mm-hmm. been circling around. Mm-hmm. And you because you think about like how big the globe is and where wherever this virus started from. Oh, girl, it's been making mm-hmm. its pathway. Yeah. So it's just recently that it's caught up to us. But. I know. I don't know. I, I, the one thing that I think I'm grateful for in this whole um, COVID moment is just the time to refocus my own life. But mm. also, I'm really happy now that at least in New York, the industry that I'm most associated with, the restaurant industry, is able to like start getting people going, all those workers and things. That to me is something that's like... Okay, finally, even though I'm still not back at work, there are others that Mm -hmm. I know that are back to work. And that's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. Slowly but surely, we'll make it all work. And slowly but surely, eventually Mariah will be back on stage. (laughs) Right? Oh, do you know what? So remember the last, uh, maybe in the bonus episode from last week, how we were talking about doing a virtual concert? Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. I mentioned it. Bjork is really doing one in England or maybe in Iceland. 15 pounds. Oh, I was going to say, what is she charging? 15 pounds, honey. I got 30 extra. As a re- Does as, she want a couple? Right. No. I mean. Reasonable price <laughs> to see like a live, brand new live show. Wait, but 15 pounds is really like 30 bucks, 30 bucks. right? Yeah. Okay. That's, I would pay slash, that for Mariah 100%. Slash fundraiser. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I think Mariah should do something like that. Yeah. Speaking of Mariah sort of giving back to the public, she just did a Instagram tweet post about a food bank yes. that she is supporting. And she was asking all the lambs to support, which is really sweet. There's got to be a way. Hello. Hello, honey. It's a thing. Uh, Now's the time to like cut the BS and start helping each other. This is the moment for it. Yeah. I, I think it's called the Ample Harvest. Ample Harvest on Instagram at Ample Harvest. Mm-hmm. You can go and, and donate to there. But I know here in New York, there have been so many food banks that have been out there doing things. So it's it's really, really a, a great cause. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not somebody who cooks at home. And girl, I could get into the stories of me cooking at home dur- during the beginning of COVID. <laughs> mm-hmm. What were you making? <laughs> oh, honey. I... Some some BS is what I was making. I don't even know. <laughs> but I will say, not to get too far off topic, I did make a really killer egg sausage sandwich. Okay. Girl, it was all about the bread, though. And you had to make that bread really good. Almost like, not like a garlic bread, but like, you couldn't just toast the bread. 
you had to put it in some butter on a cast iron skillet. Okay, but did you make the bread? Or you bought the bread? Oh, no. Honey, <laughs> honey, 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 honey. Let's not get crazy now. Okay. Oh, I made the eggs. Can, All we, right. okay. can, we, go, can we go there? <laughs> That's a starting point. There we go. But the perfect toast of a bread is yes. very quintessential. In the skillet so, is so, good. Yes, uh-huh. in the skillet. Mm-hmm. Not in like your regular toast, a little bit of butter. Yeah, because then you get the nice oily and crispy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, 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 girl. And yes. then you get your egg just how you like it, which might be a little runny for some. I like mine a little harder. I don't like a lot of like sauce. Do you pop the yolk? No, I don't pop the yolk, but I cook it until the yolk is almost not runnable. So like over, you wouldn't say over hard. I guess in a restaurant, you would say over medium. Okay. I want my eggs over medium. Mm-hmm. Something like that. And the sausage, is it a patty or is it a link? Sausage. It's a, it's a patty, but it's cut up. So I didn't make the patty either, girl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cut up because the bread that I bought was very good bread, though. Uh-huh. I probably should get some of your bread because that would be good. Yeah. Well, um, I, I perfected my bread skills over the quarantine. See how we're all learning things yes, in, in the yes. COVID moment? Yeah. So, yeah, that's the extent of my food things. But when you're when someone like me is like always eating in a restaurant or... You know, a lot of us, a lot of you who cook at home, mm-hmm. you forget about the people who like really don't have that source of food mm-hmm. anymore, mm-hmm. Uh, especially like lower income people. Oh, so, kids going to school. Yes, exactly. Like yeah. kids going to school. That's a major meal of theirs. Yeah. So whenever you can give back. For the food, like Mariah is saying, like, do what you can. Yes. Well, here's the thing. Even though it feels like we've been doing this forever, people are still in crisis. Still I know. Going on. And it's sort of like, you know, there is so much going on that yeah. people forget about the food crisis that is going on. Yeah. You know, and it's not necessarily just about the low income people. It's also the food chain mm-hmm. and farms yes. and farmers who rely on these things and everything. Like, like it's a it's a total breakdown. Mm hmm. In, in a lot of industries and, yeah. and food is a major thing. So it is, it is a moment. So thank you, Mariah, for throwing that out there and giving us a moment to know that there's got to be a way. There's got to be a way. I mean, we're still trying to get justice for Breonna Taylor too. That's still not <gasps> happening. Can we talk about Oprah? Yes. Yes. The Oprah magazine. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Well, Oprah has given up her spot on the magazine for the first time in history and put, I know. put Breonna Taylor on the cover. Mm-hmm. Which is a good thing. By the way, our There's Got To Be A Way segment is still going strong. If you go to our Instagram, go to the link in our bio, there's a, a thing you can click. There's Got To Be A Way. There's a new website called forbriana.org. Click, click, and will, you can send an email just to say something. Good. Because that's what we need. I know. I know. And I did it while I was watching TV. It takes like five minutes. There's like three links you can click and it's super easy. And just do it. Yeah. Gotta, it's, it's it's really easy and I hope something really does come of it. It's it's just really uh, amazing that like or just mind blowing that something hasn't happened yet in this case. She got murdered. <sighs> Girl, I can't wait to read the Oprah magazine article because, mm-hmm. you know, Oprah is going to bring it home and she's going to say what's up. Yeah. And speaking of Oprah, she also has a new show coming out. I saw that. Did, it's something about Apple like TV. Oprah, Oprah conversations. Yeah, but I'm wondering if it's a secret reboot of the Oprah show. Just no audience. It probably will be because she's been doing things with WW Weight Watchers. Yes. And she goes live all the time. Yeah, but that's always like it, what she's been doing is specific. Like it is Weight Watchers or it's Super Soul Sunday, which is like a spiritual mm-hmm. theme or it's these like random one off conversations she's having. But there's no like consistent show. But I think that's what this is going to be. be. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm really excited for it because girl is just bringing me back to my days I know. of watching the Oprah Winfrey show. We were even just doing that back in time a few <laughs> weeks ago. I was like, oh, those days of I watching know, Oprah. I know. And even when Oprah did a bad episode, you're like, ah, it's okay, girl. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> Because some of those Dr. Phil episodes were not my (laughs) cup of tea. Yeah. But I'm really excited for what Oprah has. And I'm glad that Oprah has given up her space. Mm -hmm. That she has held the cover of that magazine with her own image Mm -hmm. for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And Oprah is, I mean, one of the most powerful women. She's got the money. And you know that's what the problem is. It's money money talks. Mm -hmm. 
people with money. Mm -hmm. They make the things go around. And I'm really happy that Oprah's doing something like that. Oh, definitely. It's great. And the the photo was done by an artist who I don't I don't know who they are, but Oprah tagged them in her Oprah post. And that's a really great piece of digital art. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. So shout out to Oprah and hashtag justice for Brianna. I think what people aren't connecting is the circumstances and it's that could happen to you. 100%. Someone can break it down your door and kill you yeah. in your sleep. Yeah. And I mean, if you are a person of color, the chances are even bigger and greater. Mm -hmm. And it's just mind boggling to me that we're still in this day. Like when we go back to that Oprah episode where she was talking to the little girl and she's like at eight years old, Haley, I can't believe that Haley can't go to school and just be Haley. Yes. That there's a problem that other people have. Yeah. Here we are, 20 years later, girl. Uh huh. Mariah and it's worse. It's worse. It's still, it's worse. It's absolutely worse. But I think that's something that Mariah is going to start touching upon. I think our back in time episode about Oprah was a perfect timing to sort of like this whole meaning of Mariah era. Mm. Because I think in the book, Mariah is really going to dig deep down into that. Yeah. And we just recently got a little snippet of an interview with her co-author, Michaela Angela Davis. Mm -hmm. And what did she say in that interview? She said, Mariah's excavating mm. her truth. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what Mariah's truth is that we even as the biggest lambs in the world don't know is her personal moments and her struggles with growing up biracial with a broken family mm -hmm. in poverty and then being thrust into this big spotlight of fame mm -hmm. and then in this whole new world mm -hmm. how do you even reconcile all of that i know i know girl we're we're not ready like mariah said we are not ready well based off that little interview with Michaela it seems like we're not going to be delving into stories of being famous and celebrity and, and all that we're going we're going deep and she said it's going to be another emancipation yes like I feel like this is going to be the real emancipation yeah like because like the emancipation of Mimi album was creatively an emancipation for Mariah right this is her personal emancipation yeah girl well do you want to kind of made me chuckle a little bit was when Michaela said that Mariah, maybe something like Mariah is sick of or Mariah knows that p other people create this narrative about her. Yeah. But then I was like, oh, oops. Because <laughs> basically know, we just make everything up. I know. When I was watching that, I sort of felt bad because I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. I think the Mariah report, <laughs> maybe that's why Mariah hates us. Yeah. Um, because we create a narrative. Just that from the pieces that we collect. And but this is the thing. And theories. I, yes. And that's what we do. But that's what we do as big fans because of our love for her, though. Yeah. I hope Mariah realizes that we do this just because we love her. Right. But really, we don't know. No. We don't know the we don't even know like the 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 top of it. Mm -hmm. Mariah is really going to give us a whole nother aspect of her. Mm -hmm. That we don't even know as the hardcore lamps. I know. And that's what I'm really excited for. Same. I was even thinking, what happens if we had been totally, totally wrong and have to redo everything? Well, let me tell you right now, Martin, <laughs> I'm already preparing myself that every theory and story I've told yes. myself about Mariah is wrong. Same. I do not know her. <laughs> yeah. But either a spot on, right? I, I think she's my friend. She is not my friend. I know. This is a woman going through life, going <laughs> yeah. through real life struggles. Minding her own business. I know. Yeah. I know. But... <laughs> <laughs> I know we're horrible. We're horrible. But again, it's well, all it all comes from a place of love. So. We'll have to wait and see. I know. But I'm telling you, we're gonna do like a whole book club series on the podcast. And and I think by the end of it, the listeners and us, mm -hmm. we, you, I, Martin, we're gonna have a whole new perspective on Mariah. And I'm glad mm -hmm. that finally. We don't have to sit here anymore making up theories. Mm -hmm. Mariah's going to tell us the woman she is. Yeah. That's oh, it. And we have like a reference point to exactly, go to now. Exactly. There's some truth to it. Uh -huh. And the, honestly, how many times, if you look at 30 years of Mariah's career, how many times have you heard her speak openly and honestly one on Oprah, most mm -hmm. of the times on Oprah, yeah. like Oprah in 1999, Oprah in 2002, Oprah the, in 97. The Charlie Rose, 1999. The Charlie Rose. Slash 2000. 
is when she gets these long opportunities to talk. Yes, the Larry King. Uh-huh. Those were all great moments where she was able to really give us a sneak peek. Mm-hmm. But when you think of it, it's all being told through a narrative of television or radio or something like that. And it's produced. Mm -hmm. So this is it. This is the rawness we're about to get. So I hope we're ready. But we're not ready. I know. I know. (laughs) It's going to be exciting. Okay. Well, here's the thing. So Debrat was on her radio show talking. We love Debrat. I love, love. Love. She's been a good friend throughout this whole saga well i mean everything she's been, really really for the past 25 years yeah good friend yeah yeah she's always telling the truth girl which is what i like now that she has these like side stories that she's telling us what was the last story she told us oh i don't remember last thing i remember hearing from her is when she got her girl she came she became oh, a lesbian oh oh yeah that was that <laughs> yeah no no she told the tamar story Oh, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. And then you told me yes. Debrat's story of the Tamar. So I got all that like third party, but okay. So I believe everything Debrat says. So she finally revealed the Eminem story, which Dan, you tell him was. Okay, disgusting. no, I, why are you putting that on me, girl? <laughs> <laughs> I can't make myself say it. Okay, so gross. listen, I, <laughs> and I also know our Twitter has been blowing up oh over this God. story. Yes. I can't even like read all the comments. I know. So. You know, we talked last week about the headlines of DeBrat's like, oh, quaking in his boots or something because Mariah's going to talk about him. Eminem's nervous. Yes, Eminem is, Eminem, yes. Eminem is nervous. Yes. Sorry, 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 sorry. And we're just like, oh, who cares about Eminem? But from the way DeBrat spoke on it, because they were talking about the headline that we were talking about. Yeah. DeBrat seems to think that Mariah will write about this in her book. Yeah. And she also said that, I, girl, I can't talk. I can't talk like this. This is so nasty, girl. <laughs> this is like sophisticated. Okay, so the Debra- <laughs> <laughs> Listen, okay. I'm going to channel my inner Debrat, my inner Chicago. <laughs> and I'm going to say what Debrat said. Debrat said that <laughs> had ejaculated <laughs> on Mariah. No. Or not at, not on her, but like in his clothes mm-hmm. when he was near her because he was so excited. Okay, let's break down the scene. So, I don't know if I want to break down the scene. <laughs> well, I totally believe that happened. I 100% believe that happened. But do you think they were making out? Uh, you know what? I don't know. Because then he just saw her and but like, flat. But here's my other thing. When you think about this whole scenario, to me, that just would like flash me back to like, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, 12th grade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's just say that. Yeah. And that's where those things would happen if mm-hmm. you were making out with someone. Mm-hmm. You're a full grown adult. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I understand, you know, sh- things happen, mm-hmm. but that just to me seems like if they were just making out and that happened, I would be like, that's very immature i believe it though i 100 percent believe it yeah because i think i remember when eminem was releasing his parts of songs and this that and the other i still remember people talking like oh they never and even mariah in clown yes. the song clown she was like yeah we never were together or whatever mm-hmm. which i think is true i don't think they had a sexual relationship no, I, I think I don't think so. No, I think that happened. And Mariah's like, oh, look at the time. We're like, um, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I uh I need to find a man. Yeah. <laughs> and like, whatever, you know, a man will call what you will, but you know what I mean? Like, it was just like that's just like no, thank you. I know, I know. <laughs> I still find it was such an odd dynamic, her and him, even kissing. I can't picture it. Same. I really can't. Well, that's why I think she just dropped the whole scenario. She's like, yeah, gotta go. Probably. Plus, she was probably focusing on other things as well. Like, he was just on the back burner. Yeah. And yeah, sure, you want to hang out? Let's hang out. Yeah, yeah. And then stuff like that happens. It's just like, uh, okay. Whatever, girl. Yeah. All right, listen, we have to go to break. But real quick, no Emmy nomination for In The Mix. Oh, my God. That's the big thing of the week. I was so disappointed. I know, right? Yeah. But whatevs. I mean, uh... I want to say I'm not surprised, but I sort of am. Well, I'm just not. Well, like you said, I'm not surprised. It's a disappointment. Also a tough um, scenario, too, because it's not the main show that ABC want to be pushing and promoting. They would, Blackish is the star of that 
franchise. Yeah. It's probably a bit harder to get the spin-off show to get nominated. True. And I guess, honestly, the show itself isn't that big on the network. Mm. Like... You know, speaking of back burners, I feel like Mixed Dish is that back burner, but even Mixed Dish is on the back burner of Grown Ish. Mm -hmm. So I guess I could see that, but I just really feel that In the Mix is such a strong song Mm. and it fits so well. That whole opening sequence that they have for the show is done so well and it's a little disappointing, but again, Mm -hmm. this is how. They treat Mariah. I know. When can she get a break? Remember I said, you know, earlier on in one of the early episodes, I was like, don't be like the Grammys. Here they go. Acting like the Grammys. Acting a fool, girl. (laughs) Acting a fool. (laughs) (laughs) What can you do? Nothing. Nothing. Just hope hope for better next time that Mariah does something like this. Also, it's a totally flawed system because they left out a lot of Latin X actors and shows Mm -hmm. and all the trans actors from pose oh girl i'm so upset about that yeah so remember i mean remember when love takes time was on pose yeah girl (laughs) so don't be acting like the emmys are great and they know what they're doing exactly but we will say one one thing is good that wu-tang was nominated Mm. because they had like that little docuseries or whatnot on hulu and that that got nominated so like it did it, it showing something and you know mariah loves the wu-tang yeah. and wu-tang is for the children uh-huh, uh-huh. so we love that but yeah, where's yeah. mariah come yeah. on come on a nomination at least okay back to eminem okay do you want know to get under my skin what is when people say he's the best rapper ever oh girl bye but i'm like are you tell me every better than anybody from the wu-tang clan girl bye Girl, bye. Bye. I can't. I know. Like, that's just ridiculous. I know. That's ridiculous. Eminem would be nothing if it weren't for, like, he, to me, you like, yeah, he had some couple, like, back in the day, mm. had, like, some couple good songs, like, that you would be jamming out to when I'm driving to high school in, yes. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. 1998 or whatever. But, yeah. like, that's manufactured. Mm-hmm. Yes, maybe he's better than your average Joe, mm. but he's definitely not like a like high the high the best no no girl bye no that's that's all i gotta say yeah. girl bye. <laughs> all right we're gonna go to break <laughs> 